Всем привет еще раз. Hi, everyone again. Сегодня у нас AI трек будет... We have an AI track now with six great presentations. Слот один час. We have one hour. And at the same time, we're starting CTFA, CTFI, that you can play during the first and second day. Individual participation, great quests, so definitely do try yourself. And during today, we will have a one-hour break from uh, 2 to 3 o'clock, and uh, then we will continue with the presentations. And I'd like to invite Fyodor Emelianov with his presentation on uh, the multi-party computations. Hi, everyone. My name is Peter, and I work at Bloomtech, and um, I work on uh, multi-party computation uh, for quite a while, so I will talk to you about it. The clicker doesn't work, unfortunately. Okay, it worked. Do I change the slides or you change the slides? Oh, it was turned on. Okay, so yeah, we will figure it out uh, on the on the run. So let's start with a simple motivating example, and the graph here shows the computer vision systems progress uh, in uh, and the quality. And as you can see, in the beginning, it's quite slow in development, but in uh, 2010, we have a jump, a quantum leap, and even exceeding the level of 94.9, do you know what it is? Yes, that's a human level of uh, image recognition. So in 2015, the robots started to distinguish cats on the photos from dogs on the photos better than the humans do. So let's go back to 2010 and uh, ask what has happened there. ImageNet was published in 2010. The data set that had thousands of uh, images that were uh, marked, and then the crowd started to work on this. So high-quality data is sometimes a revolution or a game-changer, but it's always good. So here's another example. In 2006, Netflix, well-known company, decides to exploit the uh, crowd, and uh, they publish the data set that has the data about the viewers, the movies, and the ratings set by the users, so those are not cats. And, of course, it's depersonified, and the names of persons and films are changed, and some data was even tinkered with, so Netflix thought about privacy. So the teams were contesting, and $1 million was the prize, and in 2009, two or three smart guys from Texas University decided to um, correlate Netflix data with IMDb data and compare the marks set by the users and dates. And thus they were able to re-identify nearly half of the Netflix dataset users. Nothing terrible happened, but of course uh, there were um, court cases, the contest was closed, and the story went viral. So the data Making the data safe for the data subjects is not really a very simple task. This is a standard slide I use, and uh, usually we choose two or three or four data leaks happened recently, and we put on the slide what has leaked. So this time we decided not to do so. There's a lot of leaks. Maybe someone get, will get hurt by not mentioning them. So I cannot, I could not resist 
uh, searching myself in any data with, of course, some, some uh, uh, trepidation. And uh, sometimes uh, friends ask what, what's about them there, and usually also I find nothing. And recently we had a leak where I found myself and most of my friends and colleagues. And of course I didn't like it. The case here is that user data has long-term usefulness. So if you lost the cards numbers, um, it's a catastrophe, right? But you can you know, call the bank and block the card, and that's it. And the problem is solved. But if a person is, for example, seriously ill, then, you know, uh, it will not be fixed soon, but it can be commercialized for long term. And data leaks are not the only uh, stopping thing, because the companies don't want to exchange data, because this means lack of uh, loss of value for this data, both for the, uh, the person who gives the data and for the one who receives. For example, I want to get a pizza, but uh, this data cannot be sold fast. In 20 minutes, I will not be uh, wanting a pizza. And if I'm a skier, that's a good uh, that's a good thing because for some time I can trade this this data and of course exchanging data you can also uh, get in conflict with some regulator and the com the consequences can be very different from, like a very big fine or something uh, something very mild so the companies don't want to invest in such synergies even if it broadens the business so what do we do? First of all, we can do nothing. We can stay in the same paradigm and base our products on that paradigm. But the risk is high that someone will outpace you for credit scoring, for example. I remember the times when you had to fill in the... Uh, the form, and that was the scoring. You know, a couple of databases checked. And you can still do it today, but you will be losing to those who are, you know, more aggressive and, for example, who know that I am a skier. So the idea number three is that uh, collaboration and data fusion is a useful thing, an important thing, and to some extent it's inevitable. But you need to be to know how to work with it. And the answer lies in the technology zone. And the landscape is like this. You have like five technologies. I put them on two axes. The higher, the more protected your data is, and uh, to the right, the more uh, the, the more uh, higher precision. So starting with what Netflix did is not, doesn't work. Then we have differential privacy, great algorithm, but doesn't work very precisely. And the idea is, let us put some noise in the data. Uh, but the story here is that you either have too much noise or too little noise. The data is either not protected enough or the value is destroyed. Then uh, secure enclaves, hardware technologies to the right, to the, on the bottom, great thing. But unfortunately, in the current Russian realities, those technologies are not, uh, are not actually accessible. So then we have only uh, homomorphic uh, encryption and uh, uh, multi-party computing. And as MPC is my, um, my interest, then uh, uh, let's step, uh, step deeper into this. So secret split is a very well-known uh, crypto algorithm in uh, Genta, uh, the city. There was a room that stored all the important uh, documents by from an uh, uh, administration, like uh, Holy Inquisition documents, and there were three locks on the door with three people, the highest standing people, owning the key. They had to gather together and then open their locks and doors. So this is secret split. And this is digitized 
um, thing. The, this is the true, um, uh, the true thing. So I got the penguin and I generated a random mask. So if I give you this mask, I disclose zero information about my penguin because this can be a part of penguin of Mona Lisa of you know night night shift and uh, whatever else and the idea is that there are protocols that enable you to uh, summarize multiply um, and uh, do other things with the numbers without knowing with knowing only their parts so this algorithm is very simple and uh, to be a very direct and precise let me show it to you so three people are have a lot of money and they would like to decide how much money they have together but not knowing how much other ones have so three people would uh, split their amount of money into three digits uh, so we have three parties and one number is given is kept kept with uh, uh, with you and then the two are sent to the others so on the second step everyone has three random numbers and they cannot decode the parts uh, the, the original number so they just summarize those numbers and go to step number three they have three random numbers of course uh, the sum of three random uh, random numbers are random and you have minus 30 plus minus 3 plus 43 equals 10. they can shout together and or they whisper to someone uh, for example to me and then I will be the only one knowing the result and I did not see the data that the calculation was uh, based on and I didn't even know the algorithm now the same with the multiplication it's more complex it's not the protocol itself it's rather the main idea to multiply X by Y we add A and B where we mask the uh, originals, we uh, split the arguments, and we come to a conclusion where parties can multiply the masked version of numbers. I simplified this a little bit. It's a little bit harder. But uh, you can multiply. And you probably know what this is linear regression, machine learning. BI is uh, the weights and XI are the predictors or independent variables. So this formula has nothing but multiplication and some, uh, some summation of, of numbers. So we have parties running the protocol and calculating the linear regression not knowing the predictors, not knowing the weights of the model. So linear regression is a simple algorithm. And if we dig deeper, pretty much any machine learning method is, uh, in the end, just pluses and uh, multiplications. So you can manage the, uh, uh, the accuracy by adding the number of uh, the length of the polynomial. So you can operate by uh, digits, you can operate by data, but you, you can actually split them and make it a secret. So here's how it's uh, organized on the physical levels. Our system is uh, distributed. When a party wants to participate in, in our uh, project, we give it to him as an open source so it can be audited and then the party runs this module in their computational module and becomes part of a mutual computational network which is not designed not to 
calculate the machine learning models, but to protect data of all the parties. And, of course, there's a lot of protocols to the orchestration to uh, ensure that everything works fine. But the orchestrator does not compute. And thus you have a network where you can confidentially gather data, cryptographically mix it, and in the end, you can get aggregation, aggregated data that cannot be proven, proven uh, that cannot be um, uh, deciphered back and personalized back. So where can you use it? Let's start with what does the taxi film has to have to do it. It's one of our first cases that we ran two or three years ago. Those years, there were several operators of a taxi fleet, and the drivers were distributed between them. And each and every operator was limiting the time and blocking the uh, the driver from driving more because, of course, the driver is tired and needs to rest. But the drivers that were very willing to drive, I can drive eight hours by uh, with the index then work eight hours with the uh, city and eight hours with get. After 24 hours, the index thinks that I slept enough and starts giving me orders again. So this does not look like a good thing. But exchanging information about the drivers and how long they work is not something that the aggregators want. So the task is how do we calculate the amount of time the taxi driver worked without knowing how much they uh, they worked in any separate one? This was exactly the algorithm we described in the beginning. And, of course, uh, this was very easy to do. The first two had 90% of the market, and uh, we ideally need three parties at least that, uh, you know, uh, even or better if there are more of them and they need to be quite precise. But this is a good example of the idea that with a very simple operation you can solve a task that was unsolvable previously. Hooray. So the next point of application of those technologies is tech. Uh, ad tech, ads and marketing. And there's a lot of tasks with, uh, you know, cross-correlating the identifiers. So it, 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 at maximum you need to be uh, like how many boys have done this or that, or how many women have done this or that, or sales leave to uh, analyze the result of uh, the, market, uh, the marketing uh, campaign results. So this is called private join and compute, and we do such things. And recently Facebook has started to work very much, uh, very deeply in that direction. They are now called Meta. So we have quite significant competitors here. And the thing I love the most, FinTech. Why I love it the most? Because first, there's a lot of banks, and we won't have the issue with uh, taxi aggregators. And money loves silence. The amount of tasks is very big, starting from credit scoring and also including anti-fraud activities. And the collaboration can happen between the banks, bank to bank, and also between banks with non-banks. We had a pilot with quite a big bank and quite a significant telecom operator. The task was to generate a data set so Telecom had 196 predictors and one vector, and uh, the bank had 90 predictors. The idea was to train the model so that the parties don't see the predictors or the target 
the target variable. Uh, so we had linear regression and uh, multi-layered neural nets there. And here's how it looked. Okay. Right. So it's important to pay your attention here to on the 600 seconds. For people who know that uh, besides data sets were big, 5 million uh, rows, and usually it's much faster. So the cryptography, of course, when you add the cryptography, there's a lot of overhead. So our model had to spend 600 seconds, and uh, uh, on the sixth epoch we had the highest number of uh, ROC AUC 0 0.91, 0 0.76. Then inference was uh, 23 seconds, 1 million rows. We didn't know the targets for this uh, for this inference, and Gini was 0 0.51 to 0 0.517. So this was an experiment, and of course, they uh, could train this model on other data. And so other uh, and on other methods, we had uh, uh, better accuracy, despite the fact that we had our uh, model using cryptography. And we had eight times increase because we had we ran, we ran it one year ago. And as we scaled this since then, now we would be eight times faster running that experiment, not 600 seconds, but maybe less than 10 seconds. So that's pretty much it, and I'm happy to answer all your questions. And also the speakers can choose the uh, person to be given a prize for the best question. And we'll give the T-shirts. Thanks, Peter. Two questions. First, regarding the business part. Generally speaking, companies are not very much interested in selling the data. So the model is each and every company is uh, using their own data and then use uh, the data for inference. And this is important. This is good because uh, apart from, from you don't, you don't give any data. But this model is a third party model. Why would it be interesting to the companies? Because the economy doesn't look very well. If, if they uh, can, you know, train their models on their own data. So we look a bit differently on this. It's more convenient to train on your own data, but the synergy is very valuable and possible. When you multiply the amount of uh, data, the result is usually better. And we are aimed at creating an environment for confidential information synergy. So I can take the same banks. I have accounts in three banks. One is for salary, one is for a uh, good card, and uh, the third one is where I store my money. But there's a, you know, a tax office. No, your tax office does not have enough data. Talk to your to the banker you like, and uh, he will explain to you. To the previous slide, how just is it? to compare the models trained locally and with NPC, as it limits your amount of methods. With local training, uh, no one will use the uh, uh, regression. Probably you know, people will use gradient boosting, something even more, mm, uh, something even better. Then my intuition says that the, you know, the, uh, the results will be better. And here you are limited by the method. You are right. If you use gradient boosting on the uh, on the on the data uh, on the merged data, 
yeah, the results will be better. But uh, the uh, the experiment cannot be cannot be run. So the Gini number is better than the number that we received with gradient boosting on the separate data sets. So you cannot join the two data sets in the real life. That would be a compliance issue. Thank you. My name is Ivo Sokolova. And the questions I have first is uh, the cases and the examples that you described. How much time did it take? And the second question is, if we grow the number of sites from two to three and more, how more how much, uh, how more difficult do, do the cases become? The implementation takes a lot of time. Yes, a good question. Uh, technically, everything can be solved. There's a lot of optimizations and a lot of hints and tips and tricks. You can split the secret. Uh, there's uh, implicit uh, schemes, not between 10, but between, for example, any three of 10. Technically, everything is solved. Technologically, there are issues uh, with implementation. So with Taxi, unfortunately, we did not uh, launch it, but we implemented it within half a year. And with banks, it's still uh, in the implementation phase, different issues. There's a lot of compliance questions. Legally, you need to prove that this can be done, and there's no bank secret uh, loss. And uh, if you implement anything in a bank, you know this takes a lot, a lot of time. Hello, oh, Andrew Pinchuk, and uh, I wanted to ask about uh, running the system. So after the proof of concept, do I get it right that each and every party should update their data to, for the result to be usable? This is the first question. And the second one, in case you get additional data, how easy is it to add the data to the system so that we could get extra value? On the first question, it's true. Every country, every party creates their own uh, uh, data set and uh, uh, supports it. And second question depends on uh, on the party. If the party is ready, I am ready to implement within two days. Dmitry Smoilov, the question is, yeah, I'm, I'm here to the left. Technologically, homomorphic calculations are quite heavy. So can you comment uh, on how hard is it to expand this schema? And the next question is the implementation cases, uh, marketing and everything that has to do with it, online sales. That would be quite interesting and uh, to to be put in this scheme. So, what thoughts do you have for maybe uh, uh, what uh, you know? What do you think about developing that? So, on the first question, six hundred seconds is uh, the, the reality that we have. Unfortunately, we cannot run it faster, so we improved it eight times, but uh, we had to significantly work on, on the uh, on the complexity and we needed to merge the segments so to get better targeting and there's a lot of issues there the segment is opening up and however secretively you gathered it there's a lot of potential leaks so we tried to add the third party that would not know anything about the data that uh, uh, knows about the segment, segment 42, show the cat's ads, but this also creates potential uh, information leakage. So instead, we go to private joint compute where you need to you know, cross-check the identifiers and look at how the sales have changed or uh, work on two segments deciding how many boys have bought you know, Gillette razors. And the follow-up question regarding the GDPR. Yeah, we thought about it and uh, we started working on this maybe four years ago. The international markets were available then and uh, so the Commission, the GDPR Commission, one year ago has approved the usage of 
multi-party computations to anonymize data. So it is really an option. Next question. Peter, um, Artem Menisov, Mozhaisky Academy. Uh, for example, we have MedTech, where you have discrete data sets with uh, low amount of, of, of data, low amount of patients, and as they cannot create a compute cluster, anonymizing and noise will not help. How, how do they, how, what, do they, what should they do? And maybe we can run NPC, a broaden NPC on their side uh, by, for example, adding some NPCs, splitting the data set. So let me answer. So let me start the answer with the first, and on the second we will have a discussion because I didn't understand it quite well. First of all, if you don't have computational power, there's no silver bullet. Well, no, no. Uh, I meant that we have small amount of players, and uh, we don't have. Uh, uh, we cannot use noise. We cannot use anonymization. And if if we have one player, we cannot pass the data. So the doctors would like to save the world from AIDS, uh, cancer, uh, etc. But they cannot pass the data. Uh, they don't have the com competences to create the models. What do they do? So you'd like to gather data from the doctors? Yes. Yeah, good question. I don't know the, the exact answer. I, I, I understand they are all anonymized. They remove the name of uh, the patient and then they send uh, using using WhatsApp. But uh, you know, with your scheme, with uh, segment splitting and uh, obfuscating the personal data uh, on the left, this this does not work, right? So this is, you know, a target segment for reducing the quality of data in those technologies. Well, I, uh, I was specifically mentioning, uh, you know, homeopathy and uh, not non-proven medicine. The same is about anonymization, and uh, you can trust in the anonymization, like Netflix did. And it was not a good idea. So anonymizing is not not an answer. Okay, good. So can we run some MPC-like algorithm with uh, on, on one party? Well, yeah, the party can uh, run two servers and uh, split the data and then run it run it uh, onto servers. Yeah. Doable. It's one of the uh, one of the answers to our question. I don't know the exact issue, but you, you can definitely do it. Okay, well, we won't we won't uh, go into a deep discussion. But thank you for the question. It's a good one. Hello, Peter Henkin. The question is uh, uh, less on the technology side and uh, more on the fintech. How did you solve the uh, 152. Did you work with the regulator? Yeah, we do work with the regulator, and of course we. I know that I can create a scheme with no personal data, but we start from the idea that the you know passport number, regardless regardless of how much hashes you run on it is still a personal data. So we close this question with the user agreement and regarding the bank secrets that are regulated by um, by the, the Central Bank of Russia, then we are waiting for their position on this topic. Do you have any other questions, dear audience? Thank you, Peter. Alexander Kankov, uh, your money. And the question is, can those systems protect themselves? So 
One of the parties is compromised, their data is poisoned by some false data. What can we do? Well, we can actually do a lot. The NPCs uh, of different, there are different levels of information protection. We thought on the uh, in the presentation we considered the parties to be uh, to have no malicious intent, but you can think of models that have malicious parties and they called verified secret split that allow without seeing the data and working only with the secrets to understand whether the data was poisoned. So if something went wrong, we ban the participant and uh, you know, decide on the results and uh, can run an investigation. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Thank you, Peter, for your presentation. And you, said, you talked about MPC for uh, binaries, uh, for numbers. But what do we do with uh, the images or the language? Well, I don't know. I didn't try it. I think it's the same as uh, with the pictures. And uh, you probably will have to, uh, you know, convert uh, the data into some digitized uh, thing form. But uh, then you can run uh, pretty much the same algorithm on them. One more question: You talked about the legislation, and what is your own opinion on how much is uh, our current legislation advanced to uh, actually? allow MVC to be used? <laughs> the answer is, I, I will give you a gift on that. Great question, and it's hard to answer it. If you have asked this question, like, say, two months ago, the answer would be one. And currently, I don't know, the positions of the regulators are changing very fast, and there's a number of unpleasant centralization uh, events. Uh, some can do everything, some can do nothing. And, uh, uh, let us pretend that nothing happens and live in a paradigm that we had till the end of January. And at that moment, our regulators worked quite modernly as uh, they were answering the, uh, the challenges of the time. So now they stopped doing this, and I hope they will restart doing this moving further. Thank you. And thank you for your presentation. The question is, when we talk about the new systems, like in the beginning of 21st century, we had uh, elliptic uh, circles and during the math and uh, now we have uh, uh, a new idea with uh, parallelized calculations. So did you did you use something to prove the uh, crypto resilience and what uh, it can be hacked? So the question is two part twofold. We have the base on this, we have the database, and it's analytical, and we can prove that what we do is secure because we use the cryptographic primitives that are known to be secure. Regarding the contests and uh, the practical application, I don't know of any such activities, but we do plan to, uh, to run it, and probably with positive technologies, hopefully. Yeah, we'll be glad to. And um, yeah, I think you'll create something like Hacker One that will, where you will be able to uh, give someone a bounty for uh, for hacking. Okay, no more questions, Peter. I hope you'll be here, right? And I hope we'll be able to find you. So, with that, right now, we say thank you. And we choose two questions. I like the regulation, uh, legislation choice, black or white. <laughs> this is much harder. Yeah, white. And the black one will go to the person that sits over there. The first question was great. One. Thank you indeed, dear colleagues. Thank you.
Спасибо. Следующий доклад будет в 12. Спасибо большое. И следующий доклад будет в 12.